Good evening, everybody. I'm really very, very happy to welcome and introduce our guest today. It's an honor. While I was going through a brief note about his career and his work, it's so impressive that I'm sure that you all will be very, very fortunate to have him to talk about this very important subject and the topic. Of course, the 40, 44 minutes, I'm sure that you will get maximum out of it. So let me first introduce by reading his brief uh, profile and that will give you an idea that what a rich experience and the, uh, uh, in the field of this entertainment. We all are very much interested to know about particularly the Bollywood and we always compare it with the Hollywood. So let's see what he has really contributed. Uh, if I have to read out, first of all, we are very proud that he is an alumnus of Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad. Mr. Parthen spent 12 years in the automotive sector before joining Kavitalaya, a well-known film and television production house based in Chennai, serving the company in various leadership roles for the past 21 years. He was executive producer of award-winning films such as Rosa, very, very interesting, uh, Anna Malai, Mathu and, Muthu, and many others. Mr. Bharatan's in-depth knowledge and understanding of the entertainment industry has led to him being a sought-after advisor. He was business advisor to US-based Silicon uh, Image Inc. engaged in the design of development of HDMI a content protection technology for multimedia content. He also served as an advisor, advisor to Multimedia Development Corporation, a government of Malaysia undertaking on e-village, an entertainment and multimedia initiative project. In the individual capacity also, he advises many media companies in the areas of strategy, leadership, and innovations. Mr. Bharatan is a visiting faculty at IIM Ahmedabad and played a key role in designing India's first management course on film industry for the Institute. He has contributed to knowledge initiatives by writing a few case studies on the Indian film industry, highlighting the business challenges in a creative industry. He regularly speaks at the events of CII Indo-American Chamber of Commerce and Indo-Japan Chamber of Commerce and Industry on topics related to the entertainment and technology sector. He is currently on the governing council of Indo-Japan Chamber of Commerce and Industry and has participated in three industrial delegations to Japan, representing the ent entertainment sector. He was an invited speaker at the international seminar, Hollywood Meets Bollywood hosted by the University of Southern California, uh, Annenberg School of Communication in collaboration with American India Foundation. He was a member of the FICI uh, entertainment delegation to Japan and the USA in 2001, as well as the CII delegation to the American film market 2003, Santa Monica, California. Besides presenting a paper at the first international advisory board meeting in Malaysia on Globalization of Entertainment Industry in 2001. The film Muttu, which he promoted in Japan became a big success and contributed to building business and cultural ties between India and Japan. A visionary manager who saw professionalism and innovation as essential to the survival and growth of the Indian film industry, Mr. Bharatan spends time proactively advocating the concept he has designed a unique training module, Lessons in Excellence from the Film Industry, and speaks at various HR events on this subject. He also pioneered the design and development of India's first software for the movie industry in 1998, Hero 98. So currently, he is active in nurturing green cinema, an initiative to promote environment-friendly best practices in film production. His contribution to community includes serving as a trustee on the board of VXL Educational Trust, 
a Chennai based non profit public charitable trust which focuses on education of children with developmental disabilities. Sir, we are so happy to have you with us and we are looking forward to your inputs on the subject. Welcome, sir. Okay, <clears throat> thank you so much for the warm welcome and the introduction of uh, myself. It has always been a pleasure and honor to speak for the forums of the Ahmedabad Management Association, one of the most uh, active and uh, dynamic uh, management associations in the country. Uh, I, when Mr. Nair, uh, we met last month when I came for my teaching at the Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad, I was there for about almost three plus weeks. I made it a point to visit AMA to meet Mr. Nair, with whom I have a 42 year old association and he was working with IM Ahmedabad. And then he invited and requested me to speak today. I could never say no to his request and the request from AMA. So I'm very happy to be part of this evening's uh, presentation and uh, to speak on a subject which I'm very uh, passionate about, which is uh, the management lessons and lessons and excellence from the movie industry. So uh, I wish to, I understand that there are about almost 50 participants today who have registered for this uh, program. And uh, I'm happy to say, uh, okay, first and foremost, a very happy evening to all of you. And uh, let me speak over the next 40 to 45 minutes. I'm going to speak about lessons and excellence from the entertainment industry. So I have a small, uh, uh, not a small actually, it's a pretty extensive PowerPoint deck, which I usually use for a 90 minute session. I, got, I prepared this when I was invited by the Northwestern University Kellogg Business School in America in the year 2015. And uh, that was a 90 minute presentation, but I'm going to use uh, very, very important slides in that presentation for our uh, discussion today, because I have to restrict it to about uh, 45 minutes. And then of course we will have some interesting question and answer sessions after that. Okay, so just if you can give me a minute, I will, okay. Uh, so we were talking about uh, the, Excellence. So basically, what is the concept of excellence in life? We talk about excellence when we have a very high degree or a very high level of performance. That is normally referred to as excellence. When there is also a consistency of performance over an extended period of time. For example, if we take the example of uh, the film industry itself. Let us take the instance of uh, Amita Bachanji, somebody who has been in the field for about almost five decades. He is about 75 years now, came into the industry at the age of 25, and still we talk about his acting, we talk about his performances, we talk about the angry young man image. And we continue to speak about Mr. Amita Bachchan. That is an example of excellence. The other more popular thing in India is cricket. We talk about cricket. Let's say Sachin Tendulkar. If you're, if you're a cricketer who has made 100 centuries consistently over a period of say 18 to 20 years of a cricketing career, that kind of consistency of performance is excellence. So there are two factors with reference to excellence. A very high level of performance. And where does one get this high level of performance? It comes from a very good understanding of oneself. A high degree of self-awareness of oneself in terms of strengths, weaknesses, and the opportunities that exist for that person. It is some kind of an individual SWOT analysis, 
so to speak. So uh, self-awareness allows us to identify what are the areas which allow, which can help us to be excellent, how to excel in what we do. So in this topic, I'm going to talk about certain lessons that the movie industry can teach us. The movie, there are two types of lessons that we can learn from the industry. We have lessons from the stories in the movies themselves. There are so many movies which gives us inspirational messages, which allows us to think deeply about what we want to do in life. In fact, it is said that there are many films which in fact transform our lives because it gives us a certain message. It gives us an inspiring thought process. And many people take this to the level that they change their lives, they change their jobs or change their careers. But that is one type of lessons. But here I'm going to talk about lessons from the practices in the movie industry. What are the different types of practices? But before that, let us go to the concept of the excellence itself a little bit more. I'm going to be skipping some slides and uh, take you to some specific slides because of the time that we have, and we are also lost about eight to nine minutes during this uh, tech glitch. Now you could see this uh, slide in front of you, and I'm sure those of you who are seeing Japanese films, what they would be able to remember this film. So this is Seven, Seven Samurai, a very famous film directed by the famous Japanese director Akiro Kurosawa. So he was considered one of the most influential directors in the last century. A director who came from very, very humble means in Japan and who became a very inspiring and a very perfectionist Japanese movie director. In fact, most Japanese people are highly perfectionist. That is why you see that their bullet trains always come on time. All the people in the whole entire country uh, are very, very punctual unlike the rest of the world. The 1954 film redefined the action movie genre and spawned innumerable remakes like The Magnificent Seven, even Shole is supposed to be an inspiration from the uh, movie, The Five Men Army, Bugs Life, etc. It is also considered the most successful movie in Japan's history. Was Kurosawa's biggest endeavor was to shoot on a limited budget of $500,000, which was a big sum of money in those days. You know, we are talking about the 1950s, early 1950s. And production is supposed to have stopped many times. So this is Akira Kurosawa, who persisted and became a huge director. Now I'm going to take you to this person who is Stanley Kubrick very imaginative and daring director who was known for his engaging screenplay and very superior psychedelic cinematography. So he made films like The Clockwork Orange, 2001, A Space Odyssey, The Shining Perfectionist, and so on. And one of the, the, the film, The Shining Perfectionist, there was one take that he shot 160 times. I'm going to briefly talk to you a little later in the in my talk about the importance of the stakes in movies. You know, we always say the director says cut, and then he says take six or take seven or take 15. What exactly does it mean in terms of performance, in terms of excellence? And he also, Stanley Kubrick also made extensive use of the wide angle lens, almost into an art form in the movie Clockwork Orange. Now, all of you will be familiar with this face of Madeleine Brando, who appeared in that famous movie, The Godfather, the first Godfather. There was a Godfather 2 also, which was a sequel. And this was uh, directed by the famous Francis Ford Coppola, a director, the film's writer and director. And uh, this was a mafia based movie. But there was no mention of the word mafia anywhere in the film. It was a, based on gangster film, right? 
but there was no mention of the word mafia anywhere. So that was something great about this movie. And uh, one of the interesting things about Godfather was the black cat that was used extensively. The, the cat used to be handled by the hero himself. So the placement of the cat with Marilyn Brando was seen as representing the hidden claws beneath the dawn's warm facade. So externally, it was very warm if you could go through the, all the scenes. But he had a very tough interior. And this was symbolized by the director in the form of the cat with its uh, hidden claws. So this was an interesting film. It was one of the most popular films of all time. And uh, everybody can recognize those who are familiar with movies of my generation. This is Alfred Hitchcock, the, the director who made films like Psycho in 1960, the Birds film, which was one of the, it was a $3.3 million film in the 60s, a very high budget film for those times. And to ensure the authenticity of a low budget film, Alfred Hitchcock came up with several marketing gimmicks to raise awareness of the movie. So he was himself uh, doing the marketing of the film. And one of the ways he did that for uh, the, his films was he would say that nobody would be admitted into the multiplex or into the theater after the movie started. Very interesting, right? So he would ensure that everybody was in their seats when the movie started. People were not allowed inside the theater after the movie started. So this also ensured that theaters were filled up the very first scene of the movie. So notice something common amongst all these diverse personalities and also these movies. Now, if you look at the common characteristics of excellence, we could look at this slide. It's a very important slide for our talk today, for my talk. So you can see that excellence has a multi-dimensional character. You have to have courage to experiment and try new things. You have to have strategy. You have to be inspirational. You have to have a visionary character. It must be thinking. A lot of critical thinking has to be done in order to be in this path. It, has, it must be path breaking as well. It must be a path break. You know, when we say path breaking, the story of the movie has to be unique, very innovative, and not something that people have seen before. It should not be like a story which is similar to, or oh, people should not say I've seen, it is very similar to that Korean movie, or it is very similar to the Hindi film which came 1965. Okay, it should not be like that. So there is also an innovative trend. In fact, we say that every movie is an innovation because no two films can be identical. And within a movie, within the same film, no two scenes can be identical. Within a same song, the lyrics cannot be identical. They have to be completely different from each other. So what this implies is that there's a lot of innovative thinking that goes behind the design of a movie. So it is actually a design thinking that the director, the creative team, along with the producers have to look at. We also use the word blockbuster in relation to performance. So excellence should lead to a very high level of performance, as I said, and that is translated by the word blockbuster. Trend setting, a director has to set unique trends. Not only the director, the actors in a movie. Many times the actors get typecast. We say that, you know, Shahrukh will, will always be looking good in a romantic genre film. Okay, or a Hrithik Roshan is very good for dancing. So we tend to typecast people. But take the example of Vidya Balu. She completely broke her image by acting in the movie Dirty Picture. And that was followed by a string of very unique roles for her, like uh, Kahani and a whole lot of other films where she changed her image completely. So this is trend setting. 
you have to be trendsetters. And of course, consistency. I spoke about this a little earlier in the context of uh, cricket and uh, Sachin Tendulkar, context of Amitabh Bachanji. So consistency of performance. So all these characteristics constitute excellence. So just to quickly sum up, high levels of performance, high degree of consistency, and showing this performance and consistency over a fairly long period of time. So if somebody is able to survive and sustain and grow over a period of say 35, 40 years in one's life or one's career, particularly in the movie industry, the movie industry is known for very short careers, particularly for artists. If an artist is able to sustain for about two decades in films, it is something great. If somebody like Amitabh Bachchan is able to sustain for five decades, it is uh, completely super. Okay. So let us go into each aspect of excellence from the movie industry. Oh. Before that, let me get back to this slide. Okay. So you could see there are three dimensions of excellence. We have the creative dimension, that is the content, where the content is actually being created. And I've used the symbolism of lights here because light and darkness to light is creativity. Okay, if you get a sudden idea which makes your project different, which makes your story unique, and this is not true only in the movie industry, in any performance, in any kind of sector that we may take up, you know, we need to constantly keep thinking and having lights in our brain. So that is why I use the symbolism of lights, which is also relevant for the cinematography in the film industry. The second dimension is the technology. Because today the movie industry is all about technology. Without the technology, and there are three aspects of technology which we will discuss in more detail. And the third dimension is the action, which is the managerial or the business segment of excellence. So we are going to, over the next 30 minutes, I'm going to take you through these various dimensions of excellence. So first, uh, let's talk about creative excellence. Let me give you some examples of creative excellence. Now, people who might be familiar with a lot of movie directors from the South would be able to identify this famous person, Mr. K. Balachandar. Mr. K. Balachandar incidentally happens to be the chairman. He has passed away, of course, in 2015. But uh, he was the chairman of Kavitalia, the company which I run now, along with uh, Mrs. Pushpakandar Swami, who is the daughter of the great man, Mr. K. Balachandar. In fact, my coming into the film industry after graduating from my Maktaba was thanks to my wife and Mr. Balachandar persuading me to come into the movie industry way back in 1992-93 with the movie Rosa. So Mr. Balachandar was a Dada Sahib Falke awardee in the year 2010, which is the highest national award given by the government of India for lifetime achievement. And he was the first South Indian director to get this award from the South. Until then, the South awards usually went to big artists like N.T. Ramarao got the award, A. Nageshwar Rao in Andhra Pradesh got the award, Mr. Shivaji Ganeshan got the award, but all these people were artists. Mr. Balchandra was the first director to get the award, and it is not easy to get the other side award. It, it requires a lot of excellence and consistency of performance. Mr. Balchandra himself, his career spread over 44 years, and he was working on a script until the day before he passed away. So that, that shows the caliber of the person, the excellence of the person. And Mr. Balchandar is uh, reputed to have introduced all the big stars in South Indian cinema. 
both Mr. Rajivikant and Mr. Kamalasan are his uh, students and uh, he was their mentor. Now look at this other great person, in fact, even senior to Mr. Balchandra, Mr. Satyajit Ray. He's regarded as one of the greatest audience of world cinema. So Mr. Satyajit Ray actually transcended from big Bali films to be being recognized as a world film director. His first film, Pathar Panchali, 1955, actually won 11 international prizes, including the best human documentary at the Cannes Film Festival. We all know that the Cannes Film Festival is the most uh, reputed film festival in the whole world. And this particular festival is known for its creative excellence awards. And that is why I chose the work of uh, Mr. Satyajit Ray. His work had a worldwide impact with filmmakers such as Martin Scorsese, James Ivory, Elia Kazan, Steven Spielberg. All these people have been inspired by the films and by the work of Mr. Ray. Even Akira Kurosawa has praised his work. So Ray received many major awards in his career, including 32 Indian National Film Awards. Right? Mr. Balchandar got about 53 National Film Awards. So these were people who dedicated their life to cinema. And because of that dedication, they became symbols of excellence in the movie industry. Closer in time, Mr. A.R. Rahman, we had the privilege of launching his career in the movie Roja. I say we. I myself uh, had just joined Kavitalaya Productions at that time in 1992-93. The, the film got released in 92. The original version was Tamil and I was uh, pleasantly surprised when I was first introduced. He was a 23-year-old shy music director, but when he asked us to come after recording four songs of Roja, we were simply blown away by the music of Roja, the Choti Si Asha song. The other songs were simply like a breath of fresh air in, in Indian cinema. And he's the only music composer to win two Oscars in the same Oscar uh, award ceremony. So if you look at Mr. Raghman's achievements, he was nicknamed the Mozart of Madras. The Mozart of Madras. Described as the world's most prominent and prolific composer by Time magazine has won two Academy Awards, two Grammy Awards, BAFTA Award, Golden Globe, five, actually five National Film Awards, 15 Filmfare Awards, and the list goes on and on. But what are these awards for? You saw the previous slide and I spoke about excellence, trendsetter, innovator, consistency of performance. All these are defined by Mr. Rahman's music. So he redefined contemporary Indian music through universally appealing tunes. So one of the things that Mr. Rahman does, and I had the privilege of sitting with him on two or three composer compositions and recordings. And he has this unique and uncanny ability to blend sounds from across the world. He would use African instruments with Brazilian uh, instruments with the uh, South Indian Carnatic instruments, along with Hindustani tunes, and create a completely different genre of music. So that is innovation. Seamless integration of traditional incompatible harmonies was his forte. Preference for new and untrained voices. Many music directors become very comfortable with established voices, known singers. And they would not like to try and experiment with new people, but not Mr. Rama. He would experiment. And that is why he was, he had the ability to bring in so many new singers and very fresh voices, who in turn became big singers. Perfect sense of melody and rhythm combined with immaculate sound engineering. So these were the strengths of Mr. Rama. So I just gave these three examples, but there are many, many more examples of even today younger directors like Anurag Kashyap, uh, artists like you know, 
uh, Rajkumar Rao, so many, you know, Aishman Purana. We have a bunch of young people today who are highly dedicated and whose goal is excellence. So to sum up what we mean by creative excellence is first you have to be a subject matter expert in your chosen field. So you cannot afford not to know your subject in depth and get excellence. So you have to, so even if you're an artist, you have to be a top class performer. That is why artists can invest a lot of time in improving their acting skills. It is not just the acting skills. It is the voice delivery. It is the modulation of their dialogue delivery. It is also in their dancing skills because we all know that Bollywood is about song and dance, right? It is the soul. The song and dance is the soul of Indian cinema. So you have to have dancing skills. So all these are subject matter skills for the artist. Similarly, if you're taking a movie director, he must have excellent visualization skills. He must be able to visualize the script or the story. A writer is writing the story in a different way. The writers themselves in the movie, in the movie have their own concept of visualization. But the director has to take the visualization to a different level. And this visualization finds a form on the screen through the cinematographer, the DOP, or whom we call the director of photography. The second aspect of creative excellence is personal mastery in the art form. So people who are able to master their art form, whether it is acting, whether it is creative writing, whether it is direction, whether it is art design or production design, whether it is music composition, these are all art forms. Let us remember that the movie that we watch, it could be a masala movie, but the genre of a movie is basically it's an art form. Because what we are bringing together is artists from different walks of life, completely from different walks of life. And we say that in the movie, there are 23 different crafts. 23 crafts have to come together. These are multi different crafts. We, you know, some of these crafts go down to even like choreography, computer graphics, all these skills need to come together to create the magic of a movie. There is a constant need to break the mold, better oneself and innovate. So innovation is the key name of the game. The second pillar of excellence is technology, what I call as technical excellence. So I've tried to symbolize this in the form of a CD. You know, these days there is no CD. Today it's all video streaming, right? And that is another aspect of the technological development. But I've tried to symbolize this into four quadrants, the form of a symbol of a CD. Let's start with the top left-hand quadrant, keeping up to date with new te technologies. So it is a very important requirement, right? Today, it is not possible to survive if you are not up to date with new technologies. Even a simple thing like a new mobile phone. If you are using an iPhone, so every one or every two years, iPhone changes their software and they make you go for a new model. It is part of their marketing uh, strategy. To go for an Android phone, perhaps you could use it for a year more, maybe about three years. And then you have to update the features of the Android phone. So even on a phone, you have to know how to use the phone to the optimum level. That is new technologies, new features, and the new things that are built into the device. In the same way, the technology aspect. So let me give you a little insight into the three areas where technology works in movies. We have the technology of audio, which is the sound. We have the technology of video, which is the picture or the image. So that's why we call it audio visual. Audio is sound and visual is the image or the video. The third area of technology is today, the image comes not only from shooting on a camera device. You also get the image from creating on a computer graphic imagery, what we call CGI, computer graphic imagery. 
or special effects. So there are two sources of the image. The image can be shot on a camera, could be even a phone camera. When today we are able to get very good quality of images on a phone camera. But if you are requiring 4K resolution, you cannot get it on a phone camera. You have to use special cameras for this purpose. And there are many cameras which are available for this purpose, which, which are used in the movie industry. The second quadrant on the right, identifying the appropriate technology for any given requirement. So it is not enough to keep up to, up to date with new technologies. You also have to be capable of identifying what is the appropriate technology for a given requirement. The third is adapting yourself to the new technologies. After identifying the appropriate technology, are you able to get into under the skin of the technology and be able to use it comfortably, right? For example, 20 minutes back, it was very clear that I had not adapted to the new technology of Zoom, okay? I was kind of struggling a little bit, but filmmakers cannot afford to do that with the filmmaking technology. You have to adapt to new technologies. And finally, integrating technology and creative processes. This is the most important part of finishing the technological development. You have to be able to integrate the new technology with the creative process in the film industry. For example, the most common example that comes to my mind is the use of special effects. Take the example of Bahubali, the movie Bahubali, where they broken down the script and at the script level itself, you have to identify what are the technologies. Similarly, take your mind back to the Hollywood film Gravity. For want of time, I'm not playing those uh, clippings, but I would urge each one of you participants to go back and uh, look at, there is a very interesting YouTube video on gravity feature it. It's just an eight minute video, but it's a beautiful video which explains how computer graphic technology was used. And in the movie Gravity, they actually invented a new type of light box. They called it the light box technology. It was a completely new technology that they adapt, that they invented for the sake of that movie, but just shooting that one film. Now that light box technology is now used in other movies also. So this is part of the technology. So I'd like to give you some examples from movies. This is the movie Matrix, one of the very, very popular and uh, lovely movies of the early part of this uh, century. The visual effects in Matrix was one of the first, Matrix is one of the first movies to raise the bar on visual effects in Hollywood. Just like we say that Bahubali raised the bar for Indian movies on visual effects and CGI. Matrix was the Hollywood equivalent of Bahubali almost about 1980, years back. The fight sequences and stunts of Matrix just simply were stunning. As they say, they took our breath away. Okay. It is also the live wire work in Hong Kong films. They wanted to do action in a different way. And they used a special technique of live wire working, which was very balladic. And every person in that scenes had a very supernatural grace about it, a very superhuman feel about it. So what the tech team created in the Matrix movie became a rage that it was called the Matrix effect. So that is the importance of Matrix. Just like in those days we used to say, my marketing professor used to say that you don't use the word photocopy, which is a generic term. People used to say, can you make a Xerox of this uh, paper, of this report? Or can you make a Xerox of this agreement? So the, the word Xerox, which was actually a brand of photocopier, started being used for the photocopy itself. In the same way, the type of special effects used in matrix called, was called the matrix effect. Now this symbol is very, very familiar. This is from the movie Avatar, which until two years back was the highest 
crossing Hollywood, highest crossing movie of all time, right? About 3.2 billion, almost $3 billion was the total gross box office. And uh, I don't know how many of you know this fact that the Avatar took 12 years to actually create, right from the concept, the idea, the concept uh, work of the color and so on. And you see there are three colors which prominently come in Avatar. Blue, which represents the ocean, and brown, which represents the earth. In fact, blue and brown were the prominent colors. And then there was a lot of green to show the, uh, the altered planet, you know, the ideal planet. Okay, because the entire theme of Avatar was about the environment, that we should not destroy the environment. And it showed two types of uh, uh, characters. We had human characters, but shown as the villains who were out to destroy the planet. And the humanoid characters, like this uh, picture that you see, they are the humanoid characters who were actually inhabiting the part of the planet. And they were trying to save that planet. So there's a constant struggle that's going on. In a way, it's like between good and evil. Now, the aspect of technology in Avatar. There is a one particular post-production house called the Veta Studio, which handled most of the digital effects of Avatar. It took a year of time to just figure out the special effects to be done. And 1000 TB terabytes of data was required. 1000 TB of data was used to render every element of the planet Pandora. Pandora was that uh, imaginary planet, a figment of the imagination was the ideal planet where there is a lot of the greenery and so on. In order to make the animated look realistic, they used a technique called image-based facial performance capture or more simply called motion capture technology. So again, there is a beautiful YouTube video which runs for about 10 minutes. If you go to Avatar, you could put the video called Avatar feature it or the making behind the scenes of Avatar. You could go into this and you will see how certain special effects were created. So you could see the impact of technology in the movie industry. The third type of technology is what we see in the theater technology. So it is not enough to have technology for the content creating the movie itself. Unless we are able to appreciate the technology on the big screen. And the, 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 the beauty of the movie, the beauty of the cinema is the ability to sit together and watch with 300 other people looking at a large screen in front of you. This particular image that I chose, they have these, uh, it's a 3D movie. They're, they're all wearing those uh, 3D spectacles of their glasses to be able to enjoy it on 3D. So multiplex technology. And here I would like to give you a little bit of uh, insight about the multiplex and how the multiplexes came in the late 50s and 60s in America. So when television started making a, its entry into the United States, Hollywood sensed a big threat to their existence, to their survival. Right now, for example, like we talk about the OTT, threat to cinemas. That has been the subject that's been going on until cinemas opened up. You know, they say, you know, if COVID uh, is not going to allow cinemas to open up for one year or longer than that period, what is going to happen to the future of all the investments that we have made in cinema theaters? The same kind of question was asked in the 50s and early 60s in the United States. So Hollywood said that we have to redefine the cinema experience for the audience. And that was when they came up with the concept of, you know, abandoning single screen and two screen theaters. So in, in India, we still have close to about uh, 6,500 single screen theaters, which are slowly getting converted into multiplexes. But in America, they said, let us not have single screen theaters. Let us put multiplexes or multiple theaters inside a big mall and they redefined the cinema experience as an evening out experience 
for the whole family. And today, that's why that's what we have also used. So we see that we have built the theaters inside big malls. And what is the business thinking behind that? The business thinking behind that is that people who come and do shopping inside a mall or who come to the food court of the mall will also take the initiative to come and buy a ticket and watch the movie. And vice versa, people who already have booked for the movie online, they will come inside the mall and go to the food court and have their dinner or lunch if it is a weekend. And they will also do their shopping in the mall. So the idea is to leverage the number of footfalls that you get inside under all under one roof. So look at this innovation. It was an innovation of redefining the experience of a movie. Until then, people would only say, I went to watch the movie. But now it would be, I went to the PVR uh, theater inside the Phoenix Mall. And I did a lot of other things. I came back with all these uh, beautiful uh, shirts and uh, salvars for my family. So something like that. So more and more theaters are getting equipped with digital projection and sound systems. So to sum up the technical excellence, the new media technologies are creating new sources of revenue. 3D technology and visual effects are giving links to creativity and digital media is producing cost efficiencies. So I'm going to quickly get into the next aspect of excellence, which is the managerial excellence or the business excellence. So we spoke about creative excellence. We spoke about technology excellence or technical features. And the third and final aspect of excellence is the managerial excellence. And here again, I would like to discuss this on the basis of a quadrant. Four aspects of managerial excellence, starting with production excellence. I'll start from the bottom right hand corner. Production excellence, which is the excellence in creation of content. Marketing excellence, which is in terms of excellence in marketing, the movie as a product. Strategic excellence, which is the business strategic areas and the people management. So for want of time, I'm going to concentrate on production, marketing and people. Now, this is a famous still from the movie Slumdog Millionaire. And this is a film that many Indians would not like to see again and again, but it became a great award-winning film. And even our own Mr. Rahman, whom we spoke about earlier, got the award for the best music composition for this film. The movie got several other awards. So I'm going to talk about people management first. Diversity in educational and social cultural backgrounds. So imagine that the movie industry cannot happen, a movie cannot be made without the full involvement and the passion of hundreds of people who come together for the movie. So even if it is a small budget, two crore movie or a three crore movie, you require at least about 40 to 50 people have to come together to make that movie happen, to create the product, to create the content. So, but then who, or what about the nature of people who come together? These people are completely diverse. There is diversity in education. If you look at some of the actors of say the Esther years, many of them, 80% of them were high school dropouts. They would not have completed perhaps even a, a high school. They might let alone get into higher education. Today, things have changed. 99% of the actors have at least a college degree. But the, that is not the main point here. The point here is that they understand and identify their passion at a very early young age. And then they try to pursue that passion and become a big actor. Let me give you the example of Mr. Kamal Hassan from South. He is actually a ninth standard dropout. But nobody who talks to him or interacts with him can even guess that because he has evolved and developed himself. And similarly, Mr. Rajnikam, okay, when in the early days, he had uh, problems with English, but now he speaks wonderfully because the people evolve. 
So diversity in educational and sociocultural backgrounds. These are very, very important. Sociocultural backgrounds also differ. Their economic backgrounds differ. But the important thing is that they all come together to create that magic of the movie. Okay, I've used these two famous heroes to say that, you know, people come together in a collaborative and creative work environment. Actors bond with each other. Similarly, in the movie, The Bucket List, you had these famous two actors, uh, Jeff Nicholson and Morgan Freeman. Both came together and people, when they come together and act even in a single movie, they establish strong personal bonds and they become friends for life. Sometimes they bond too much. And that's also a problem if they are from different genders. Motivating one another leads to excellence. Two stalwarts coming together to create magic, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, a very famous Hollywood film where actors motivate each other on the sets. Coming back to an Indian example. Okay, let me give you this example. Most of the senior actors, for example, if it is Amitabh Bachchan acting in the father's role, and if his uh, son's role is portrayed by a newcomer, a new face, a 23-year-old young new, new actor, you can imagine how nervous the new actor would be in front of the seasoned uh, Amitabh Bachchan. But Mr. Bachchan would go out of the way to make this young man feel very comfortable. He might even act out that particular scene for him and say, let me just think about this. The director would become very helpful and supportive to rehearse the scenes. So people learn from each other. One of the great things about the movie industry is how work, co -work, people learn from co-workers because they cannot attend uh, AMA programs easily. They can, but most of these people are caught up for time. They cannot uh, attend IMMDP programs, but therefore, what is the source of learning for them? They learn from each other. They learn from their co-artists and co-workers. This is a scene from the famous film Shutter Island. The iconic director Martin Scorsese. One of the big things about the movie industry is the way feedback is given. When the director says cut, take two, immediate and effective feedback is given. And that is the type of feedback that this industry becomes very unique because of its nature. Okay, the director has to give that feedback because the scene has to be completed within a particular time. And maybe they have to move on to the next scene. By the end of the day, they may have to do those three scenes. So this is a very important part. In the corporate world, people take months to give the feedback, right? But not in the movie industry. So I want to sum up the people management part of the excellence in this term, mind the gold and not the dirt. Spotting the positives and strengths in people. Being good in the art of criticism. How do you criticize somebody? How do you criticize a team worker? So what do we mean by criticism? So it is criticizing the performance and not the performer. This is a very important lesson for all of us, which we can learn from the movie industry. The director, when he is not satisfied with the actor's performance, he will only criticize the performance of the actor by showing where the actor could have performed better. But he would never say that, you know, you're unfit. You, I thought you would do the scene great, but you're not doing it. It would never come out in that manner. So one of the important lessons in life is criticize the performance and not just criticize, give how the performance can be improved. This is where the experience of the leader has to come in. Here, the leader is the director of the movie. He's the, like the CEO of the movie project. So he has to ensure that he is not criticizing the performer. He is not making it personal, but he is only criticizing the performance. Managing a mixed bag of performance for diverse skill sets. Okay, I'm going to talk about marketing excellence a little bit from 
our own experience of the film Muttu, the dancing Maharaja. Sir, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Sir. So yes, we just, uh, are we running out of time? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. I'm going to wrap up in the next two minutes. And okay. then go for questions. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Is that okay? Yeah, please, yeah. sir. Please, sir. I'll just wrap up with the marketing excellence. So Muttu was the film called Dancing Maharaja, Udoru Maharaja in Japan. And I was personally involved in marketing this film in Japan along with our Japanese distribution partner company called JCA, Japan Cinema Associates. So this gave me a lot of experience, gave us a lot of experience. And I would say when I say us, it was the entire Indian film industry got the experience of how to market a film in a completely new market like Japan. So discovering new markets, going global and bridging cultures. And here, there are just two lessons, two things that we did. The word, the title Muttu could not work in Japan, but we changed it to Dancing Maharaja based on some quick research of the Japanese market at that time. And immediately the Japanese audience understood the word Maharaja is a very popular hotel chain in Japan, where they sell, I mean, they, it's a North Indian uh, food uh, hotel joint, excellent uh, food was, is served. So the entire Japan knew Maharaja. So when we said dancing Maharaja, they immediately understood this as a movie. Similarly, the film Three Idiots was a great example of innovative marketing. Okay, we all know how the Amir Khan came in disguise to steer two towns and cities like Bubba, you know, Bhubaneshwar, Nashik, Aurangabad, and so on. And those who could identify him behind the disguise, they were entitled to a free lunch and a photo op with the three heroes. So this is an example of marketing excellence. Okay, <clears throat> very briefly, I'll just talk with one line of production excellence. Production excellence is basically about operational efficiency. How? Because there are so many multiple activities in the making of a film that you need to bring all these activities into a process, into a system, which allows you to do certain activities parallelly and other activities sequentially. So where there are dependent activities, you do it sequentially. Where there are parallel activities, you do it parallelly or simultaneously. And the movie industry is all about the system and process. Okay, we were implemented this in the film Roja itself. Okay, with this, I would like to conclude by saying I just gave you different aspects of excellence. Excellence is what drives the movie industry at a different level. And I must say that it is not that every movie, every production house is able to perform this at a very high level, but we are all learning constantly. With every movie, we are learning from our experience of the past. And the idea is not to make the same mistake a second time. We learn from the mistakes. Perhaps we may make one or two new mistakes, but not the same mistake, right? And that is the beauty of the film movie industry today. With these words, uh, Alti Man, I hand, hand, hand it back to you. Thank you very much, sir. It is an excellent lecture. Your talk is so useful for each and every one of us. I'm sorry that because of the paucity of time, we are not able to take the questions right now, but definitely these questions will be forwarded to you and hopefully they will also get answers from you. But happy. I'm sure that your presentation itself is very, very useful and giving all the details. Okay. I'm sure that all the uh, participants are benefited a lot from your inputs. And I once again, on behalf of participants, extend my sincere thanks to you, sir, for sparing your valuable time for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and having me on this presentation.